The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We have an ECB hike of 75 basis points. They go from 0%, folks. They were at 0 to 75 basis points, which is what they hike, a historic hike, but it was all but expected. But we're seeing some action in the markets on the heels of that. We have a press conference that began just over a half hour ago. And you have the S&Ps accelerating lower right now. We have yield spiking higher. Over in Europe right now, the DAX negative by about six tenths percent. FTSE is flat. Cacarol negative by about eight tenths percent. Over in our market, you got the S&Ps. We were just positive coming into that news at about 8.30. We'll zoom in on the action. There's yesterday's action. You close out at a price point of about 39.86. You were higher at about 2 a.m., almost inching towards 4,000 within just four points of that price level. And then as of 7 a.m., you were as high as, what, 39.92. So we've given up about 30 points, and we were pushing 39.90 as we came into that 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time press conference for the ECB. We've accelerated lower, but in the context of where we were yesterday, man, you look at just where we opened even on the – s and I'm going to throw a quick Fibonacci number up there, just uh, even where we closed, taking out the accelerated high over last night. And even a 382, well, we're coming into that price point right now at about 39.53 with the S&Ps negative by 22. NASDAQ 100, you're negative by 89 points. That's 7 tenths percent. That thing charged higher yesterday. Dow, negative by 130. The Russell, negative by 13 right now. You got Bitcoin hovering at around 19,000, quite the sell-off on Tuesday. Crude was all the story yesterday, man, quite the pullback. We hit a low yesterday, 4.30 at 81.50. You got below that at about 5 a.m. Could we have seen a 79 handle? I mean, that is pretty close when you're talking about some extreme volatility. And just look where we are over the last four hours. Crude has bounced $2, but all we're doing is bouncing to where we were at about midnight Eastern time last night. Keep our eye on crude today, following the day it had yesterday. And when you're seeing this type of currency action, we're seeing action in the gold contract. Gold yesterday surges to 1739. I mean, quite an update, right? When I was talking to our man Kevin Hinks, and we'll talk to him next segment, gold was trading at 1708. You charged higher to 1739, but man, about 730 in the morning, we've had some volatility to the downside for gold. Gold now negative $4 on the session. You're $16 off the high we had this morning. Just an hour and a half ago, gold trading at 17.23, and we jump to notes and bonds, and there's some volatility for you, folks. Now, you talk about volatility. Tuesday, you accelerate to lows. Yesterday, you had higher price and lower yield, okay? And today, we accelerate to 116.22. So you traded more than a full point from the lows of yesterday to where we were. But since then, I mean, look at this drop-off, man. These are 15-minute bars. Let's put it on a five-minute to illustrate the drop-off we've had. 8.15, 8.30, the press conference began. And since then, we've dropped uh, almost half a point on the 10-year. We got 10-year yields at 3.27%, 3.27. Well off the lows in terms of the high yield we had yesterday when we were definitely above 3.3%. But nonetheless, pulling back a bit on the 10-year. And let's jump over to some of those currencies uh, before we go through some of the, fun the fundamental action this morning. And there you're seeing it. Right. That's going to drive some of the action, man. You're seeing some dollar strength, some euro weakness. The euro was over a dollar. Right. Quite the move, man, in terms of shaping what we just saw in gold. OK, but that's where you're seeing some of the give back, folks. That's why I'm talking about currency. So important right now. Let's jump over to the U.S. dollar yen. Yesterday, up to almost 145, you pull back to 143.40, and look at the run, man. Just from 740 this morning, the yen was at 143.30. You know, you're up almost a full point. In any other day, that would be a, a hammering move, and it is today. All you're doing is you're back to where you were at 430, but we got some action across the board, whether it's currencies, whether it's yields, uh, and let's jump to the headline. And the headline, let me jump to 
after the ECB, and they put up a historic hike. I think I got it there. There was the headline. Historic jumbo hike. All but expected, though, folks. Deposit rate, 75 basis points. Economists looking for 75 basis points. New forecasts show faster inflation, flagging the European economy. Uh, they don't see a recession. I was listening to Bloomberg earlier this morning, uh, and they had some choice words, man, for, for the attitude of not looking for a recession as they ratchet up rates from zero to 75 basis points in already a slowing economy in a big way. They, as in the ECB, along with our Federal Reserve, accused of reacting too slowly. You can probably go beyond accused at this point. Reacted too slowly. I can say things, folks. They definitely reacted too slowly across the globe to the upswing in inflation that began as COVID lockdowns ended and worsened when Russia invaded Ukraine. ECB dealing with some big energy problems in a big way. Um, and yeah, you talk about an acceleration. This is euro area inflation, okay? The black line is euro area inflation. The red line is core, right? A lot of the energy over there, okay, a big factor. That's why you take it out. But core is still accelerating, man. And they just went above zero, folks, okay? There is no turnover in that chart yet. And our CPI, our inflation chart doesn't look much better than this one, man. Okay, now the energy factor over here definitely helping a lot more in terms of what we're going to deal with. But our core numbers through the roof as well. And we have not seen the shift that is necessary that the Fed is looking for. Okay, but they're hiking. Uh, and yeah, that's going to be a tough one. Prospect for Germany, largest economy on the continent, are bleak due to its outsized reliance on the Kremlin for energy. Talk about a big mistake. So they hike by 75 basis points. It's going to be an interesting day as they join kind of the foray into hiking, see how that impacts things. We jump over to the dollar index. Come on, there we go. Right back above 110, man. You talk about a small reprieve from 110.78. I mean, the moves, folks. What is that, down $2.50, $2.5 almost. You pull back from yesterday's high to this morning's low, no. Excuse me, 150. Yeah, okay, that's a little bit better. Still mammoth moves. We're back above 110 in the dollar index this morning, and we got the S&Ps down about 19 points. And, uh, yeah, I believe Lagarde is still talking over there. Is that correct? I'm watching Tiger's Den. They're chatting about it in there as well. Um, but, yeah, it'll be interesting to see the dollar index continuing strength recently. The reason why is because they've been hiking yields in the U.S. far above anything else. You just saw that they were at 0%, okay? I mean, imagine being at 0% with what they're dealing with with inflation right now, folks. They got a long way to go. But nonetheless, they will begin hiking. But how long can they hike for? That's the worry over there, man. They are in some big trouble, and I'm not sure how you get out of it when you have a lack of economic power to alleviate the pressures that are going to come when you try and tame inflation. You know, we're seeing it in our markets, but in our economy, I mean, we still have a pretty healthy economy, all things considered, folks. I know inflation is raging, but when you look at the jobs numbers and you look at the unemployment numbers, et cetera, real wages definitely declining. Nobody is happy about that. We're seeing, you know, core inflation rising in pretty dramatic fashions. But our economy is pretty strong as of right now when you look at an employment stance. Not sure Europe handles things as well as things slow down and they just now begin to hike to get control of inflation. S&P is continuing lower. We're giving back some of yesterday's gains. Coming right into that 382. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. Talking to our man Kevin Hicks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P futures negative by 21 points right now, trading at 39.57. That's just more than one half percent in the red. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market on the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV. Kevin Hicks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, they walk you through the day's market action, folks. Usually they're talking about three different equities throughout the program. They set up hypothetical trades, all of them talking about options with defined risk. Kevin Hinks, we got the ECB joining the party this morning, and we got Chairman Powell speaking right now. Good morning. Yeah, Tommy, I mean, the one-minute candles in the dollar and bonds and the 10-year yield, they're crazy right now. I mean, this is a busy morning. For a day where we have very little economic data and very little earnings, boy, this is a big move in the markets are making, and the market's trying to figure out what it all means. You've got Christine Lagarde speaking. You've got Jerome Powell speaking. You've got a 75 basis point move by the ECB, which, in my opinion, was the bare minimum that they could have done. I know a lot of people thought they couldn't, Tommy. There's no way. Remember, their inflation problems are worse than ours. And their new prime minister just talked about natural gas subsidies for the next two years. So they're talking about more spending, which means more inflation. So the ECB had no choice but to at least match what the U.S. is doing. And now you've got Jerome Powell speaking. Tommy, if I was in that room with Jerome Powell, I would ask him what gave you the – what was the reason that you had to be so hawkish in Jackson Hole? Was it the overall stinginess of yields or was it new government spending since August 12th of about $1.1 trillion? What was it that made your mood so ornery? in Jackson Hole. So uh, there's a lot going on here today, Tommy. Yeah, that's for sure, man. A nice quick summary. And and, and there's uh, 
it's it's amazing how rates and currencies impacting so much and you have Lagarde and Powell out there right now and you got a historic 75 basis point hike. I was talking about in the first segment, Kevin, and I was going to finish up after I talked to you, but I found this line. I'm reading just a Bloomberg article about the ECB this morning and it finishes off with economists polled by Bloomberg reckon the ECB will raise the deposit rate until it reaches 1.5 percent broadly where analysts see the quote unquote neutral interest rate that neither stimulates nor constrains the economy. And I said to myself, hold on, you're telling me that basically they're still stimulating the economy is one way to look at that with inflation where it is. Um, and and I, I guess, you know, it's not like you have to, but they're in a tough spot, man, with inflation raging, the economy slowing a bit. But it, but to speak to your point, I would say, you know, you, you have to, man, you, you, you got it. They're coming from zero percent right now. So they're still in a somewhat stimulative interest rate policy. And that's even after a 75 basis point. So so it's a it's yeah. just quite a deal, man. Uh, I, with that in mind. With that in mind, Kevin, we got crude bouncing a little bit. We almost got into the 70s in crude yesterday within about a dollar fifty. What do you think of the crude action? Uh, somewhat related, of course, to the markets yesterday and everything going on, uh, but approaching some pretty decent levels, uh, even below eighty dollars yesterday. Yeah, heavy trade in crude oil with with volumes taking the, this contract to the downside. It's a little surprising that it's gotten down here with everything that we see in the future. And everything that that we see right now, Russia is you know, wreaking havoc in natural gas and energy markets in general, Tommy. So, yeah, the, this is a pretty interesting turn of events. I don't know how long it'll last, or you know, this is why another reason, Tommy, where if you're trading, you should trade risk defined. Because who would have thought we'd hit eighty eighty dollars with no real change in the war in Ukraine, no real change in the overall supply you know, demand. You can make a pretty good case that with China shutdowns, demand could be affected with a recession, the demand side of the ledger hurting. But you're, you've got OPEC Plus talking about production cuts now. So, yeah, oil is volatile, Tommy, to say the least. I mean, it's always nice to be reminded sometimes and hopefully nice in that in that you're not in in front of that train in terms of you never know more than the markets folks because you put it well kevin it's like this chart june 9th you were at 122 you're pushing 80 bucks you're down 30 to 35 percent over the last three months and if anything nothing's gotten that much better in that market and we're pushing 80 dollars and if you get to 80 bucks which we were almost at yesterday are you telling me there's an equal chance we get to $70 as there is to $90? Very tough to wrap my head around that. But, hey, folks, you don't know more than the market, man. We're getting a lesson every single day with this. With that in mind, Kevin, what are you guys talking about at Fast Market coming up at 12 today? Two good names coming out, earnings after the bell today. Zscaler, the cloud security company, and DocuSign, the electronic signature company. Two really important names. And then in the third block, we're going to look at Intel. With everything going on in chips, we'll trade Intel. Obviously, they've had their uh, share of problems, but still a dominant player in semiconductors, Tommy. So three good names today. And again, if you want a lesson, folks, that you never know more than the market, if you told me back in, let's see, Kevin, I got DocuSign up here on the Thinkorswim platform. I'm looking at a price of May of 2018. Folks, DocuSign trading basically right near the price that it's trading at right now. If you told me in 2018 that two years from then would go through a pandemic where everybody had to do everything online for two to three years, and you said, What is DocuSign going to be trading at in the year 2022? Is it going to be higher or lower? I wouldn't say that it's going to be the same price, folks, to put it lightly, right? Pretty remarkable. Uh, give us a little tease, Kevin, in DocuSign for anybody looking for a bit out there. This thing just pushing low after low after low, it seems, trading in, uh, even today. Looks to open negative at 54.25. This is the classic story, Tommy, of a quality company doing the right things, growing, that got way ahead of itself in terms of the stock price during the pandemic. But that doesn't mean this company doesn't have a bright future. So we'll take a good hard look at it today. Nice, it reminds me a little bit of Zoom um, in terms of Zoom's a great company, folks. They're not, you know, based off nothing. They make money, but multiples, None man, of these multiples. companies, Tommy, are going anywhere. I agree. I agree. Uh, their multiples might be going somewhere, but the companies, right. they're going to be <laughs> yeah. around, folks. Kevin, I appreciate the time as always, man. We don't talk to you tomorrow, so have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Tuesday, and we'll be watching Fast Market at 12 o'clock today, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great weekend.
Always a pleasure. You too, man. Folks, tune in every trading day. You heard about it. They'll be talking about uh, three gay companies. And yeah, DocuSign. Uh, he put it well. It's a great company. They're not going anywhere. They got ahead of themselves in a big way. But you start looking at some of these companies, folks, that are profitable. Okay, it's one thing when you're getting into a company that's not profitable. Then you're just basing it off theoretical pro forma spreadsheets in the future. And if you know how those work, they're just basically pulled out of thin air for all perspective and that's that's what we see last year that's what we learned over the last year you know forward projections are just pulled out of thin air sometimes and they could be magnificently wrong as was the case on many of these companies when they pulled forward all the growth during the pandemic and it turned out that's not how it was going to go forever seems too easy in hindsight right but when you start pulling back i mean zoom now listen i'm not saying buy zoom i have not bought zoom at these lows okay but this company makes money. The market is now well aware that their growth is severely hampered. I think they grew Zoom at about 8% for their enterprise customers last year, last quarter, excuse me. I'll have to look it up. No matter what it was, it was pretty low dismal growth. The market has priced that in. Uh, there might be some opportunities to the upside when the market is pricing in pretty mundane growth for a company that does make money. All right, they're still dealing with some PEs though. We'll take a look at this. Uh, let's jump around right now, even as we come into the break. What are we talking about here? We're talking about, where's our PE? There it is, 25. So it's still a little pricey if you're not growing at any severe level, but well off those historic multiples before. Stay tuned folks, we'll come back for the open. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you accelerate a little bit lower on the open. Actually, you just had a spike. Yeah, this is the 930 bar, correct? Yes, it sure is. So you just have the S&Ps drop 10 points just in the span of what have we been open, 30, 30 seconds or so? Uh, now, we were, if you back things up here, is that where I am? Yes. We were right at the 382 coming into the open. We blow through that, the 618, 3931. That's where I'd look, the next stop for the S&Ps. We'll see if it runs into any resistance. You're about 12 points above that price level, but market's dropping pretty quick right now with what's going on. Now, folks, if you don't follow Fibonacci's, I would advise that you take a look at them at least and see if they work with your trading ideology. Uh, look at the 618. I mean, the Fibonacci retracement we were just looking for was the short term, but on a daily basis, from the lows of 3639, you trade up to 4327. Doesn't mean this low is going to hold, folks, but 3900, the 618, we got a 100 point bounce in the SPs, man. Now, you did make it as low as 3978. Okay, it is an art, not a science. Doesn't mean it's going to peg it to the point every single time, but at least you have different price levels on your chart you can keep your match your eye on and 3900 seems like an important level right now it also correlates to an area of resistance potentially turning into an area of support all right let's jump around to some of the fang stocks and see how they're trading apple had their big day yesterday you were higher you give back some of that putting it on a 15 minute right now apple trades higher they give it back they're off about seven tenths percent today that's still pretty much in line with the market now putting apple on the daily Quite a pullback from where this thing was, what, two, three weeks ago, 175 to 155 right now. We've pulled back. Apple, if you're looking for the 618 for Apple, you're talking about 147 or so. Still another $7 from where we're trading at right now. Microsoft shares this morning opens about 7 tenths percent down. We jump over to Google, off 1.2% right now. Tesla, saw some news, uh, maybe it was yesterday's action, though. Tesla producing more cars than ever, almost in China, I think was the headline. We'll jump over to that. But I want to get to Amazon. Amazon, negative 1.2%. So NFL co football kicks off tonight, folks, with the kickoff game. Now, Amazon has purchased the right for Thursday night football. That that does not start tonight. Uh, the NFL probably wants to kick things off in more grand fashion. They know everybody doesn't have a Prime account. Maybe that's not a big enough kickoff game. Nonetheless, Amazon's deal begins one week from tonight, and it will feature uh, Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs, and you got the Chargers out there as well. Thursday Night Football. Now, this is an 11-year deal, I think. How long is this for? $13 billion bet on the NFL. Yes, an 11-year, $13 billion deal that makes Amazon the exclusive home for Thursday Night Football. That's the key part here because they have aired games previously, but those games they were airing were also available on the NFL Network or potentially available on one of the networks simultaneously. Okay, but it's a first time for a streaming service has obtained exclusive season-long rights to NFL games in the U.S. Now, you think about they're going to be known for that. And Thursday night on regular television may not have been enough to support the ads that they needed to pay for the rights for that programming. And that's the reason why many networks have struggled when purchasing Thursday night football to make money with it because – it's nothing like Sunday football, folks, and it's not like Monday night football either. Usually Thursday, you're getting cast uh, one of the weaker games because it's less ratings. People are still going through the weekly day-to-day uh, -day of business and work and school, right? The kids got practice. You got work. You got to get home and make dinner for the kids. You, you give them a shower. You get them ready for for bedtime if you don't have kids maybe you're just finishing up work you're out with a friend for dinner nonetheless it's a weekday night so they don't get the same amount of ratings okay they're projecting fewer viewer viewers than tv networks attracted last season okay they're looking for 12.6 million viewers a night though now they paid money for this they're going to sell ads on this as well this is not just a straight out prime loss they are going to sell ads as part of this service and We'll see if they can sell the ads and what they can sell. Now, they're going to have everything from Al Michaels doing the play-by-play -play to NFL analysts, pregame show, and all of that. Uh, and we'll see what they get. But as a, as a part of Prime, not a bad deal. Now, in March of last year, Amazon agreed to pay about $1.2 billion a year for the exclusive rights. And what ended up happening was that was 80% over Fox. Not long after the signing, 
the NFL added another another wrinkle. The league was ending its Thursday night deal with Fox after the 2021 season a year earlier than expected. That mean, meant Amazon had to jump up a year early. You had both CEO Jazzy and Chairman Bezos signing off on jumping that deal a year ahead to be the exclusive provider. Uh, the show is being shepherded by Fred Godelli, not familiar, but he's been producing primetime football for more than 30 years. You're going to have Al Michaels in there with Kirk Herbstreet, who's a big college-known analyst. Uh, you're going to have standard things in terms of sideline retorter, reporters and everything. Now, in its main feed, Amazon will overlay stats and game updates using what it calls X-ray technology. They're going to put a little bit of a wrinkle here. Uh, it will offer an alternate stream for younger audiences hosted by a group of YouTube personalities called Dude Perfect. And it's also going to carry games on Twitch, which is the Amazon-owned site popular among video game enthusiasts. So they're adding more than you would think that the normal TV network could. Okay, uh, The first challenge for Amazon is going to be making sure people know where to find it. The company plans to buy ads on cable TV. It's kind of like when the Internet started and the Internet companies were buying ads on television telling you to come to their internet site and on the internet site they would try and sell you ads but meanwhile they were doing the advertising on the television telling you to come to their internet site and advertise on their internet site but Amazon they're going to be telling people about this now it will be interesting in terms of what those ads will look like but they're going to remind fans that Thursday night games are no longer on TV anymore I imagine you can have a little fun with an ad like that now they also struck a deal with direct TV they're going to be available in bars and restaurants. Hometown fans will be able to see their teams on local stations when they play on Thursday nights. In addition, they're going to promote uh, everything on top of Amazon's straight-out homepage, okay, to the cardboard boxes that Prime subscribers have delivered to their homes. I mean, Amazon boxes, folks, are going to start looking like Thursday NFL promotions. I'm just bringing you through how this is a big change. I mean, it happens one week from tonight. This is the NFL season. There's nothing like the NFL, at least in America, in terms of live sports and the draw that they have. And you're seeing a streaming giant have exclusive rights to an NFL game on Thursday. Now, the NFL is very smart in how they divvy up their rights to many of the networks. They don't go all in on one. So don't expect that something like Netflix is just going to corner the market and sign a deal with the NFL for, you know, some obscene amount of money just to try and corner that type of a demand. But it is a game changer how it will happen. Now, the one thing that they do talk about on the back end of this, and I've experienced it, man, is you miss a moment in live sports and people are not going to be happy. Uh, as in you got problems streaming, and no matter what happens, people are occasionally going to have difficulty connecting. Maybe you have a glitch in your stream of some degree. Nonetheless, I'm sure they'll encounter some of that as they go, but Amazon's got Prime, and, and it's not like they're entering a foray they're not familiar with. Uh, for Amazon, success this NFL season could take many forms. I mean, you're going to see. There's a lot of NFL fanatics out there, folks, and if they're not Prime members, they're probably going to sign up for Prime. And where does that lead, Right. I mean, think about it. They could lose so much money if they just got enough subscriptions because if the people sign up for Prime and they start having them order products on Prime, et cetera, that's enough money maybe indeed. Stay tuned. Amazon, though, off 1.5% so far. We'll be right back, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com the opening call newsletter is written by basil chapman creator of the trading methodology known as the chapman wave the chapman wave up down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices get the opening call newsletter by basil chapman in your inbox every day first time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee if you're not satisfied let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up tfnn.com educating investors technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paperwhite's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets catching a little bit from the lows, finishing up the conversation on Amazon. Amazon off 1.2% today. Uh, getting into that advertising part of what they're dealing with. Come on, where am I? Here we go. Nope, one more. And I got to jump back to the Amazon article. Come on. Don't do this to me. Oh, I just had it up. How do we do this? All right, I'll get it. Yeah, it's right here somewhere. All right, I'll find it after the next break. What they were talking about, and I don't even need it, what they were talking about is is that they are going to be charging $600,000 for a 30-second ad versus 500000 last year. They're looking for about 12 million viewers per game versus $16 million. But what they're saying to advertisers, okay, and think about how this is a game changer. Amazon knows everything that people buy that are watching NFL football. They have millions and millions of people that are watching, and they know their entire purchase history. On Amazon, the level of information that they're going to be able to serve up to advertisers that they're reaching is, is, I mean, it speaks for itself, right? Well worth the money that they're probably going to be paying. I imagine if advertisers figured out, figure out the best way to use that information to focus on the people that, I mean, maybe you have certain uh, advertisers that only are targeting people who have ever bought one of their products. You got a company like PG that sells so many of their products, right? They're just serving up ads directly to their consumers. I mean, it's pretty endless, but when you think about having that much data, watch out, folks. And yeah, market's catching a little bit of a bit. s and just jumped about 20 points right now. Over in Europe, they are diving lower, man. But there you go, there's a pop for you. Right when we open, that's the last 15 minutes. Let's put it on a one minute bar. As Kevin was saying, one minute bar is pretty decisive right now. And look at that, man, the last few minutes, we just jumped about 20 points from that low of 39.45. The NASDAQ 100 catches a bid. You're talking about almost 100 points from where we were at 9.36 this morning. And the Dow, just off 100 points when you were off 200 points at one point in the Dow. We jump over to crude. 83.53, up about a buck 59 for crude. Uh, and let's see how Apple's trading today following their news yesterday. Pretty well received, but the market charged higher Apple yesterday. Apple finished higher, but pretty much barely in line with the market. Today, you're off about half a percent, pretty much in line with the S&P sitting off about three-tenths percent right now. Apple yesterday, in terms of what they came out with, and I am an interested consumer right now. Uh, and here's that Amazon article. It's right there. I knew it was. I couldn't find it. Uh, so they're guaranteeing advertisers they'll reach more than 12 million viewers per game. Um, 
Yeah, about 80 million households have watched Amazon Prime Video at least once in the past year, about the same number who subscribe to pay TV service. But there was the part that I wanted to emphasize, folks, because if you think about this and you think about that they could almost do this as a loss leader just to bring people into the Amazon Prime ecosystem, they've told advertisers it has an abundance of data on Prime subscribers and could serve up targeted ads that lead to purchases. I mean, imagine you're going to be able to click on something while watching Thursday Night Football. They know you bought something three weeks ago. You click right in the screen. You're brought to the product. You order it without even doing anything, and you're still watching the show the entire time. Pretty cool. But that's where it's going, man, in a big way. All right, Apple. So they come out with the iPhone 14. I am interested because I have had my iPhone 12 for about two years. Uh, I may go for the upgrade. Uh, middle of November or so, I'm done paying for that. And maybe I'll trade it in. I'll see what kind of deals they have. Maybe they have some good deals on the iPhone 14. But I'm pretty interested to see what they have. And not really too much that I'd be using, at least. I mean, satellite service, I don't plan on using that anytime soon, hopefully. I'm not in the middle of the wilderness and, and need a satellite to, to text or call somebody. And camera improvements. Camera improvements, always welcome. But we all know, man, especially if you have a, an iPhone that's as recent as the iPhone 12, man, my camera's so amazing. It doesn't need anything. You know, I mean, they, they're going to keep producing cameras just like they keep making computers better and better. But the functional betterment of that product for everyday use, not really that big of a deal. Uh, nonetheless, my screen does have a little bit of a crack in it right now. Sometimes you can get a decent deal when you trade it in. That'll be something I look at. They also came up with an Ultra Watch, I guess. I was looking at that yesterday. The Ultra Watch... Uh, just really for like an avid outdoorsman type deal. They have one thing that's like a beacon you can hit that people can hear you from 180 meters away or 600 feet almost. Uh, the one thing that they did not do is they did not raise the price though. So maybe that's where the, the market thinks that they'll be able to compete with Samsung. And pretty interesting, down here they talk about that they control 58, and yeah, that's what they say, the devices the bulk of the iPhone upgrades are coming to the higher end pro line. Those devices are going to get a 48 megapixel camera. Do we really need all those pixels? Uh, I mean, pretty cool if you can get it done, but not enough incentive to upgrade if you don't need to, maybe. What tends to happen, though, folks, is you know how it goes, right? These batteries, they only last so, so long. Maybe you have a screen that's a little bit broken as well. So what am I going to do? Am I going to have to pay 100 bucks for a screen? Am I going to pay 100 bucks or 200 for a battery? Is that $300 I'm paying to put into my phone when maybe they have a promotion that allows me to trade in my phone, get a new one, get type some type of a deal and I end up paying 3, 4, 500 bucks or something like that over a year or two. I don't know, but you see how you really need that type of incentive. Um, so those are going to get a 48 megapixel camera and a screen. This is one cool factor. That screen's going to be capable of always staying on in a low power mode. So they have, I guess, a similar to a recent versions with an Apple Watch. So imagine that your phone, which I have right here, uh, would be able to stay on so that you could see small widgets. Maybe they're talking about weather, calendar appointments, uh, stock tickers, for instance, as they say, uh, while the rest of the screen remains off. They redesigned the notch a little bit in there as well. And the, let's see, yeah, so the standard iPhone 14 is going to cost $799. Ship on September 16th. The plus, plus version, $899 October 7th. When you talk about the Pro, that starts at $999, and the Pro Max is going to start at $1,099, those September 16th as well. And as they mentioned, they did not raise prices. Yeah, and pretty staggering, man. Flagship device accounts for about half its revenue. You're talking about last year, almost $200 billion. They expect to command almost 49% of the U.S. smartphone market this year, increasing to nearly 50% by 2024. They have made gains on Google's Android operating system used by competitors such as Samsung. Folks, I am super biased, and I don't even consider myself an Apple fanboy. I probably should, I guess, but I got some friends who are Apple fanboys, man, and I can't keep up with them. But I do have a watch, a phone, and some AirPods. So that probably qualifies me. Um, but it's amazing that Google competes with phones that are as expensive as Apple. I completely understand the dynamic that Google and Android allow people, if you don't want to spend that type of money, because it is an obscene amount of money, man, when you talk about buying a phone and then you add on the plan on top of it and what you spend on a monthly basis on that piece of equipment, there are some outstanding phone carriers, folks. If you want to go on the cheap, and I say that in a great way, 
and you just want to spend a very bare minimum on a phone, you get something small, you get a service that's not that expensive. That is the part of Android I understand. But if you're paying like eight, nine hundred, a thousand dollars for a phone, like some of these Samsungs, and you're on the Android network, I've seen the phones, folks, the ecosystem. It is not as enjoyable paying that amount of money. OK, and again, that's why I say I'm not a huge fanboy. I am in that I've seen the phones. I had a Google Android phone at the beginning of the smartphone revolution. Apple brought me over and it wasn't even close since I've been there. So, you know, as the revolution has come where Samsung is now trying to sell phones that compete directly with the iPhone, I don't see it um, playing out that way. And I love Google, man. I got Gmail. I got all that stuff as well. About 50 percent of the entire smartphone market. That's how we live. Which is pretty remarkable. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by 10 points right now. NASDAQ 100 charging back right now. You're just negative by 15. The Russell negative by 5. Dow off 101 right now. Chairman Powell jumping over to the headline from the chairman. Oh, come on. You're killing me here with these headlines. I got too much good stuff to talk about. There we go. Powell says Fed will act forthrightly until inflation job is done. Uh, Fed chair speaks as investors hardened bets for... 
That's probably a typo, and I'm guessing they mean 75 basis points hike because 785 probably would spook the market just a bit, you think? Uh, yeah, going from there just a bit. And as I mentioned, tonight, the NFL season kicks off. Pretty interesting when you look at, so you get the Rams out there defending Super Bowl champions. The Rams are hosting, and they're going to be in the stadium that they won the big game back in February because they got to play at home. The Bills. The Bills are on the road, and... They're going to be a favorite. So two great teams out there, man. A rare road favorite against the reigning champ in a season opener. How's that going to make the Rams feel, man? You win the Super Bowl, you kick off 2022 at home, and the market says we're pricing the Bills as the favorite. But the Bills, man, Josh Allen, they had quite a team last year. Uh, yeah, and we'll see where they go tonight. That begins at 820 Eastern Time on NBC. And as I mentioned, that's tonight. Next Thursday, Amazon kicks it off with their action. And it's going to be an interesting one, folks. Let's jump around to currencies as we wrap up the program. This market, look at this, NASDAQ 100. We're going to be green by the time we get off the show. Talk about some volatility. And there is green. We got the dollar index. Uh, yeah, there's some volatility in both directions. Sitting right near 110 right now. We jump over to the euro U.S. dollar. Sitting just under parity at 99.70. We check out yields this morning. We got the 10 years sitting at about 106. That's correlating to a yield right now. When I jump over, you're talking about a 10 year, 3.25%. The 10 year over in Europe, markets really accelerating lower. The DAX off 1.6%. FTSE was flat just about a half hour ago, off 8 tenths percent. CAC roll off about 3 tenths percent. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. We got our man Steve Rhodes at 1 o'clock. Fast market at noon Eastern time. You heard it. They'll be talking about three great stocks over there. DocuSign, one of those stocks. They'll be talking about Intel as well. We've got a man, Larry Pesavento, coming up at 1 o'clock. Dave White at 2 o'clock. And Tom O'Brien, he's back today live at 3. Stay tuned, folks. Have a great Thursday.